Cells, my original project was a biography, which is a biography of this character, Wolcott Gibbs, uh, who I call the New Yorker's forgotten genius. Uh, you've all heard of E.B. White and James Thurber, and Gibbs used to be mentioned in the same breath as them. Uh, he was more productive, versatile, I personally think better than, than White or Thurber or virtually anyone on the New Yorker. And I'm pleased to be able to say a few words about him because it's thanks to the J School that I know about him at all. I had Bob Christopher for two semesters of Newsweek been writing, and along with Judith Chris, that was my favorite class. And Bob told us a little bit about the history of Time Magazine, the first news magazine. And back in the 20s, and especially the 30s, Time had a uniquely weird way of presenting the news. They used uh, sentence fragments. Uh, they were scandalous. They had these weird uh, conflations. A radio orator was a radio orator, things like that. And they had a bizarre inverted narrative structure in which objects came before subjects and otherwise entire <coughs> sentences just ran um, uh, topsy-turvy. And Wolcott Gibbs wrote a parody of Time Magazine and published it in the New Yorker in 1936. It was ostensibly a profile of Henry Luce. It was a full-blown parody of Time and the most famous line was backward ran sentences until reeled the mind. <laughs> That's the one thing that anyone remembers him for. Um, and I was fascinated by the, both the New Yorker and Time in those days, and the more I found out about Gibbs, who was a very shadowy presence, the more I wanted to tell the story. I did. <laughs>